Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so, as you know, my name is Neil Fletcher, and no, I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, you might know me as the British guy here in KS, or you know, the person who dances. I don't know because because of, of our performances in the recent concerts. Um, so I'm going to tell you a bit about myself and uh, my life in the past, just to give you some background about what I'll talk about in my talk. Uh, so I'm actually from Hong Kong, and I've had many wonderful experiences there. It's a very diverse place with all sorts of people. So nobody's really, you know, you're Asian or you're white or whatever. Everybody's just friends because uh, there's just so much diversity. Um, I've also lived in Oxford in Britain, not in London. If you went to London, you, you would probably, it's a lot more international. In Oxford, it's more traditionally British. Um, and I've lived here in Kaohsiung, which you should know a lot about. Uh, so since I can't talk about all the countries and, you know, just everything specific about them. I'm going to focus more on the education and schooling and how people are brought up and how their mindsets are developed. So comparing the perception of schooling in these three places, in Hong Kong to start with, it's a very competitive atmosphere. People, you know, top-notch schools in Hong Kong from all over the world, people gather in Hong Kong. There are very good universities and uh, moved, and they've embraced Western culture as well, so you could say that they have the best of both worlds. Um, and in Britain, children are quite laid back because they're brought up that way. The, they don't think that school is the most important thing, definitely not. And they just want to have fun. In Taiwan, studying is a very high priority, as you guys may know. You know, for Asians, A is average, <laughs> and C is failing. You know, people are crying when they get B pluses. Um, and I was surprised to see when I first came to Taiwan that in fifth and sixth grade, because that's when I started schooling in Taiwan, I went to a local school called Ai Guo. Um, they were studying their butts off for exams, and I was like, why would you study for a test in fifth and sixth grade? It's not like it matters a lot. You're only just learning the basics, right? Um, I understand that now we're in high school and that's a higher priority for us, but I was also surprised to hear that after school, nobody was free to do anything because they had to go to cram school. And so I said, when do you actually get home? And they told me about 10 or 11. And I was like, Okay, so what do you do when you get home? Study for the test this month? And I was like, okay, creepy. And I was kind of scared of Taiwanese people. I was like, whoa, that's, that's just really scary. Because nothing like that would happen in England. You would be bullied and called a nerd. No offense to anybody. In addition to this, having parents from both Taiwan and Britain has allowed me to experience a lot. Uh, not only living in a few different places, but also experiencing almost opposite cultures on almost opposite sides of the world. And I can tell you now that it's very, very different. And being raised by the principles of two different nations that have developed on opposite sides of the globe has really helped me embrace a more global culture. Um, so have my parents given me any advice or talks pertaining to all this? Well, I won't tell you all that my parents have told me in the past, because that would be a long list of things. So I'm going to tell you what most represents my mom, which is work hard at everything I do, no matter what. Whether I like it or whether I don't, she doesn't mention. Just work at it. Um, my dad says to pursue my interests and do what I like and quit it if I don't. So. In my head, I brought these two mindsets together along with my previous experiences in Hong Kong, Britain, and Taiwan, and have created my very own. Currently, outside of school, as many of you might know, I do street dance, vocal singing, piano, and Japanese. Why Japanese? Is that fun? I, 
but <laughs> nobody forces me to do it. Uh, I work extremely hard at each and every one of them. I put forth my all. Uh, surpassing even, I know it's hard to believe, but academics. Uh, and this is not because anybody's told me to, like, you must do street dance and you must be good at it. Um, but because I love it. And when you love something, working hard at it isn't difficult at all. That's why I find mathematics extremely difficult. Sorry, Ms. Kaiken. <laughs> it's always been a hard subject for me. Um, and uh, however, academics alone is not nearly enough. And this doesn't mean to say that my studies or academics are not a priority for me. Uh, however, a lot of examination done today is based on academics, so you must have that down. Uh, I would also like to mention that a lot of success in today's world is based on cooperating with others. And I would know this because I've been to a lot of places, and now the world is embracing a global culture. We're not really that segregated as we were a few hundred years ago. Um, so I've also realized that there are too many people experienced in certain things. For example, in Taiwan, I know it's a very, you know, parents push you to go for a medical school or become a doctor or a lawyer or an architect, but in fact, we have too many of those. And not to say that um, uh, we shouldn't continue researching on the cure for cancer or anything, but, you know, there are other options. And, but if you like, you can be a doctor, but a lot of people are pushed to be those things. Um, so that's why we have to be good at more than one thing, because there are too many people specified in specific occupations. So not only academics, not only athletics, not only arts, and not even these three things put together. And so I'd like to mention the senior prom that I had been to a few weeks ago and how this pertains to what I'm talking about now. Uh, so uh, this is an example of sociability. And you might think that social events are just a waste of time. Maybe a lot of you don't because a lot of you are from America. And I know that social events are a big part of American culture. But for the Taiwanese people who have traditional mindsets, why, why, why attend these events when you could be home studying, right? <laughs> and in fact, events like this, like the prom, not only the prom, maybe some uh, dances held by the school or various other events, like this even, uh, they teach you how to get along with others. And you know, not even proms, dances, or school arranged events, these aren't only the only things that can help you do that. Uh, uh, an example for, that is very close to me is the dance club, which I founded last year, along with some classmates. It has taught me how to cooperate well with others. It's not only practice, but cooperation, because it's a group effort. Uh, understanding each other and working hard together, because we all like to dance, and having fun, which makes working hard very easy, as I mentioned before. So what I'm trying to say is that don't limit the possibilities. Uh, keep a broad mind, um, keep your eyes open, do what you love, you know, be a bookworm if you like doing that. Be an athlete, be an artist, if that's what you love, but also be social, go hang out with your friends and get a life. Thank you.